Hello everyone and welcome to a special guide. Um, this guide will focus about how to play position 1 or position 2 on the map Convoy. This is a two player map and it, it's a bit unique um, because each player plays on one side of the map. They are asymmetrical so every player has another layout and different objectives to do. Um, so basically I'm going, going to show you how to play the first 10-12 minutes. Um, this is the part one of the map. Getting your walkers in the middle to the end of the of the road and then destroying the shrine or something. So that you can continue playing the map. Oops, I have someone joining. Give me a second. I'm sorry for this. Um, now setting this to private. Um, okay. So this is also why my deck looks like this. These are the only two units you will need on each side to, to, compl to complete part one. And this is getting to tier two, getting one of the crystals um, and defending two spawn points where you get charges from. Because when you charges to cast the spells from the army um, casting stations, um, position one will be using healing, and position two will be using frost or meteor, depending on how good your timing is, how yeah, what's your like your preference. I uh, I think. Get it going for meteor, which is a bit harder. Um, it's better because it clears the units for a for a good of amount of time, and then they have to respawn. If you just freeze, you just prevent them for a few seconds from attacking. I don't know. It probably isn't a, a really big deal. So we will start with position one, and we will be nearly able to clear the map. But this is like us playing alone. So let's see. So this map is really uh, it pressures you a lot with timings. So you have to use the tier one unit of nature. Oh, also this is a pure nature guide. If you see. Um, you have to use the only one unit that deals the most damage on tier 1 and this is the Swift Claw. There's like nothing else that deals as much damage because of this Bestial Fury. You activate this and then they just start dealing 50% more. So they, they go up to 900 damage. And this is the fastest you can take out the buildings. So now we get rid of the tower, then we kill the small unit, um, we, we grab our energy well and we start regenerating our units. We only summon three, the three are enough um, and you don't lose too much energy. Now we just start going further even if it didn't have full energy, now we by our second well. We go around this. It's a bit bad positioning because the one was too far behind, now it got hit. So we taunt this one out of the camp so we can kill it without getting attacked from the building. We ignore the spawned wave. We will have to fight him later but after we get to tier 2. So now 
we are going to kill this tower. If you think your unit will die, you have to either search of light it, and that's not really great because you lose some energy. Otherwise, you just um, switch it back and then run around a bit so it doesn't die. This is more important than killing the tower like two seconds earlier. After we killed it, the building, which is fast enough so that no unit respawns, we kill this one. And then we starting start building our tier 2. And we need tier 2 so we can use some deep ones. We will use them for offense and defense. Now we start building this and we kill our raptors off. Because we need our energy for the deep ones. At 3 minutes the first walker starts and we completely ignore the first walker. We don't even care. It, it might just not exist. Um, and at 3 minutes on this side is a spawning point. And here is a spawning point. Um, these are always two stone skin warriors. And to, to defend against them, we need two deep ones and some crowd control, like creeping paralyzers. Or we need healing wells, which is an amazing building for this map. And I will show you how to use it. Um, first off, we get this one down. So it doesn't kind of stick with the other wave and then they start double buffing the shields and this, this gets annoying. So after we defend against this wave, we use three deep ones. Um, if you don't have the energy for the crowd control because maybe you use search of light and now you are delayed, you can always use the tainted catch. If you play the shadow version, just to reduce the damage from the warriors and focus them down. Or if you have the, like these warriors, if you have the nature one, then you just use the teleport them, they get rooted and then you just go back and kill. And then you fight one versus three or something. Now always focus units. Okay, now we have four, because we will need two to defend the spawn. We defend with two deep ones and two healing wells. Um, they recharge with a healing rate of 50 HP, and that means they two healing wells will heal you for 100 HP per second. Which is a lot and more than enough. Now if we have 4 we can just focus them down. If someone gets too damaged just get them back. Okay now we set up the defense. For this spawning point we just set up. Can you stop running away and let me build? The building here thanks so you set up like two and then you take the other two and you go south because now we need to take this camp pretty fast because we have to heal the second walker a bit but the most important one is just the first walk uh, the, the, the third walker if you and your buddy have both um, if you and your buddy are doing correctly then you can just heal um, your walker and your body using frost or meteor giving you time so the walker doesn't take more damage than you heal. Okay, now we summon the third one because we need to push. Uh, as you can see, they will defend. Um, this is like a really ugly spawn, so because it's a double wave, it happens sometimes, so we will just use some CC. And just yes, we have enough room left and we will ignore them for now 
at this point so we don't run back to us we have to get rid of this camp first they will come to us sooner or later but for now um, and you can spawn a third one and three are more than enough I don't know why he is running back all oh, because yeah I have to do like this so now we can get rid of the shielder as we can see your second walker is already taking damage but you already have some charges built up and only the third one is important if you keep this one alive you are fine just use some healing so you can see we have some spare energy now they will come to us after they join they will start here and then until this point we have to be done with this camp okay we, we take the crystal now we kill these one off we, we can like heal give me this one for a bit now I wasn't paying attention I lost a defund which isn't a problem just to see him a bit ignore the stone can launch it doesn't matter um yeah this is like a, a bit of a bummer but we will use some CC. Summon a third one. Paralyzed wave, uh, a creeping paralysis is really strong. So now we start to focus on our third walker and ignore like this one. It will kill some things, but we, we don't really need it. And you have charges left. And now we just defend. So we basically build the same defense. As you can see, both healing wells are full and your deep ones are doing the job. And you just continue to make sure this one doesn't die. While your body makes sure they kill some stuff here and give you also more charges you shouldn't run out of charges for healings just from your side because if you do this you always defend on the spawn and then you don't lose time from your charged uh, stone skin running around the faster you kill them the faster you can get a respawn and to make sure nothing will ever be able to get through you you get a fourth one because you need them to push later for your tier 3 anyway and you have to spare energy as you can see the healing wheels just heal up all the damage these one do and have spare energy left and they continue to recharge i lost a deep one so i only have like seven but it's okay now as you can see my third walker just gets really good with nearly full health and I still have four charges left. And if, if your body starts fr freezing or throwing meteors, this is like really easy. You can play this map and just try to grab your two wells and defend this on tier 1 with strangle holes and mana wings and whatnot, and this is like a pain in the ass. Because if you don't pay attention, it, it might still go wrong, and this is like the safe, safe um, strategy. You get all your energy wells and your monument already, and you have a big attack wave to push for tier 3. And now we just heal. I mean, this is more than your healing can handle, but I'm also playing alone. As, as I've already told you. So this is like, this will die. Even if I full spam, but I can spam healing and I will never run out of charges.
and now one freeze every like 20 30 seconds and this will survive for long enough and you, you even start accumulating energy for because the map gets a lot harder if you finish this one then for each monument or orb you take the waves that spawn here will be bigger and you get more waves but you can abandon the bottom cave completely and you only have to defend with this one don't die but you will die as you can see even if i'm playing alone i, I managed to get it like to 25 percent this is how you play position one pretty safe pretty smooth Rapt uh, swift claws are the most important part if you do like wind weaver strategy with shamans you, are, you will be so far too slow then all you you should do is getting your two energy wells and then going straight to the camp to, to grab the crystal and then you only defend one spawn point and then you get problems with charges unless your body does a double defense then it might be enough okay this was position one and now for position two um, we take basically basically the same deck the overall st strategy doesn't change we take our energy wells and we get more than position one players and i'm not not even sure why um and we get out here too and we get to defend two camps and take one crystal so we summon three swift claws again and then get rid of this small unit of stone skin shards don't forget to activate your damage buff so this goes faster um, if you are fast enough you can kill the stone skin hurler and the rift without an um, unit spawning which is pretty nice you have to kill less which saves you a bit of time after we kill this uh, building and the launcher we will build our power well we don't build a um, orb right now or monument. No, we were a bit too slow. Or maybe I'm, I wasn't correct. Doesn't really matter a lot. We get them back. And they just kill it. It takes us like 10 more seconds. Just make sure you don't lose a swift claw. Um, we take this energy power well, we go up here, we take three more, and then we build our tier two. The earlier you get your energy, the better and the easy, the more e easy it will get for you to defend and get a correct amount of energy. Position two is a bit easier because the patrols that spawn don't run to your monument. Like on position one, you have to a a defend this spawn. 100% otherwise like at this point otherwise they will come for your monument on this position you don't have so if you're not confident on getting to defend two spawn camps at the bottom here and on this side then you can just defend one then you defend the bottom one and you take this camp and if your body is doing all right it should be enough just make sure you don't spam your spell, frost spell, because you only do one charge and your buddy does two, so he should take the ma majority of the charges. Healing is more important. Now we take this out. Then we build our um, power wells, or energy wells. And then we, we kill this off, we don't need them anymore. Okay, now we wait. It's the waiting game. Three minutes, the 
Walker spawns, we ignore it, we ignore also the second one. On, on position 2, you only focus for the third walker. Now the weight, the boring weight. Building our monument right now and then going for deep ones. Um, if you are didn't play the map a few times and are not confident, um, start with defending the bottoms, uh, the bottom cave. Um, then you get some more deep ones. Then you clear this camp out just to make sure you have the frost um, spell available, and then you go and defend this side, this camp. Normally, you can a defense on the bottom or on this side or, or let me rephrase it you can also defend this one and take this camp over with the meteor and then then go south and defend you don't need to take the space then we just have to decide do you want to have the meteor base or the frost base on this side just up to you. If you're gonna take the meteor side, um, you ignore this patrol, let them go out from this camp, then you take over the camp and then you kill them. Otherwise you have to fight, like you kill them, then you go to the camp and meanwhile they respawn and run into your back and then you, you will probably lose lose your units and then this is over. So I will be doing the safe route for you to see. We can just ignore this like patrol that runs around here for now. Like we, we built four mm, deep ones. Also I'm not doing and building breeding grounds because it, it's a loss of energy. Um, it's good if you will spawn more than four deep ones for sure, but then you still bind 70 energy in a building that does nothing to help you push it. You can use it later for your tier 3 push or tier 4. Okay. Now we set up our defense with two um, healing mails. Take those out. Then we use the full healed to continue our onslaught. Um, just make sure these are built and your units are healed before you go away, otherwise they will spawn and then kill you. They will be healed right now and this is enough. Now we heal this one, uh, we summon this one, um, take care of the shielder and then take out the buildings. Okay. We will need six defunds to make sure we don't lose any, so we summon our sixth. As you can see, your healing wells just out heal all the damage this one can do. And your defense have an L count and just kill them pretty easily. Um, take the building first, otherwise you might get a respawn. Also the healing well was buffed. I don't know if recently, but I think a few patches ago to have a starting capacity. Okay, now we took over the frost crystal. Um, we still basically ignore the walker because our charge count is low. Um, we get one to up to here to defend and take the others to set up a defense on this side and then you have enough charges. Oh, 
Also, don't forget you will run into these. I will just pull them to me so they don't they, they deal less damage. At this point, you don't have to do much, you can just heal. Um, you can ignore these for now. As you can see, we have a respawn here. We will kill them, we need them, so we just root them on the spot so they don't run away. And then we TP one to us. Oh, okay, TP doesn't work. It's okay. We TP the other one just to give him a reduce. Make sure we are not interrupted and get this away so it doesn't die. Then get this away and hope he doesn't kill the one. Yeah, that's okay. Run around a bit so that you're healing well. Okay, this is the third, and now you just um, you have to freeze like the stone shots because they attack all the time from range. So you basically make sure your body can heal. Um, the Rainbow Walker doesn't take a lot of damage. It gets full healed on this pot. You can also like freeze these because they attack all the time. It takes a very very long time until they dis disengage. Sadly, I can't heal him, but I'm giving a lot of charges, so you see, charges are fine. If you have some more deep ones, you can just, like, use two to defend, and use, like, four to still get the other spell, because um, you can use both spells at the same time. They have a separate cooldown, so if, if I'm gonna take this... I'm not sure I'm fast enough because I was I wasn't really going for it. But basically you start by clearing out the buildings first. Make sure your units are survive. Yeah, it will die. That's okay. Also, when you freeze, you you can only freeze like five targets. So always make sure you you hit the tier three units with your freeze. Don't freeze it like this, so you only hit uh, hit the tier two that don't deal damage. The units closest to the center where you where you click will be frozen first. And this is basically how how you play position two. And if position one and position two plays together, not like, alone like I did. Um, you will always clear the map, even with pure nature. Um, it's pretty easy because of the healing wells. You don't even have to be like if if you do a normal run, you don't even need like deep ones. You can just use a healing well and some other tier two tier two unit to defend. You can also defend like with cannon towers and some shielding. Oh, it's not in the name. Like this is a sigil, yeah, like warden sigils and some cannon towers can also defend very well. Um, so it depends on you, on your playstyle. But for pure nature, this is like the fastest and safest route. From my experience, I, and I know there are other strategies, like I said, like using strangle, um, what's it called? Strangle holes and like mana wings to to kill the units direct on the spawn. But then, if you if you use the shadow uh, version and they spawn this small wave too, so they have like four five units, then they don't like root the correct target, and then you 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 lose your strangle holes. You have to rebuild them, and you have always make sure to pay attention. Not with the healing well deep one strategy. I hope um, this guide will help you clear out um, the map this time for the achievement and for other times so you get some more experience and you don't have to struggle too much with this map.
We just have to know how you can play position one and position two. And this should be enough. If you have questions for other building like color combinations, um, I might do one for um, fire next because this is also one of the achievements. And thanks and see you next time.